Morning Sun, it's your dad talking to you from the afterlife again. In this particular case it's the afterlife by the canal because we have canals in the afterlife so I'm sure you're aware. Anyhow, uh, I watched your response video, thanks for getting back to me so promptly. It felt like no time at all here but I'm sure from your perspective it was hours or something. Uh, but yeah, I mean you asked me to consider something which was to do with, if I understand you correctly, it was to consider, you know, would I you know, would I come out and say, I shouldn't have had children? You know, should I not have had you and your sister? Should I not have, um, your sibling? Let me call it sibling rather than a sister. Then people can generalise, you know. Uh, should I not have done that? If I had my time over again, should I not have done that? Well, you see, there's some things you don't understand about the universe. And it's going to piss you off this, because I know there's somebody you talk to on there who you argue about this topic, but in this case he's right and you're wrong. And it's to do with parallel universes. What you don't know is that you're living in a pretty much infinite series of multiverses. And uh, the one you live in, obviously, is the one that you live in. And you, you do this are totally invisible to you. But from my perspective, here in the afterlife, there I can access them all simultaneously. So... So I can answer your question very specifically, actually. I can say to you, you know, what would happen in, other, in those parallel universes in which your mum and I didn't get together and have you. Uh, and I've been to a couple and I've had a look at it, you know. And uh, it's a hard choice, I'll be honest with you. Because I went and had a look, because obviously I, I, it's too complicated to explain, but I live in this kind of multidimensional extended space. Um, you're just watching the shadow of me, the two-dimensional shadow of me right now. But actually I'm like 11-dimensional or something. Um, yeah, but I've, 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 I did intervene in a couple of these universes. And they are quite interesting. I'd be, you, this will mean nothing to you, this is how you do it. Yeah? I mean, to you, it probably looks like I was dragging my hand across. From my perspective, what I'm doing there is I'm flicking through the... It's like flicking through the pages of a book for me, you know. It's like you flick through these different universes when you're here. And what I'm seeing is all the different universes flick past, like that. And when I, when I see one that I like, or I'm interested in, I can just kind of turn sideways like this, and just kind of slip into it, you see, like that. So anyway, I'll just pull myself out. Okay. So I've, expe I've been having a look at some of the alternative universes in which your mum and I didn't have you. And, uh, and just to see what happened. And it's quite interesting in many ways. Because I thought what it'd do is, I'd have a look at... Adoption strategies. Adoption. So I slipped into one. Uh, about that. There you go. Look, I've just got my head in it now. I've had a look at one, and I thought there's a little baby in there that me and your mum were looking at. It was an American adoption place. I don't remember exactly where. We we're looking at this little baby, and a cute little lad he was. You know, it's funny because he looks a little bit like a cowboy, and a little bit like a Native American, what we would call an Indian in this country. Because this country, the afterlife, is very like England, weirdly enough. And we call Native Americans uh, Indians here, for historical reasons. And this little lad, he was only a couple of weeks old, he looked a little bit like a cowboy, and a little bit like an Indian. You know, there's something about his hair that looked like an Indian, there's something about his face that looked like a cowboy. So we were going to have him, and in that universe we adopted him. And I'll tell you about what happened there in a bit. So that was one of the universes I was looking at. And, I, you know, in this one here, I'll show you this one here. Okay. In this one, we're adopting, but this time we're in the north of England, in a, in a children's home in the north of England. And me and your mum are looking at the variety of children here, but one particular, one little lad here is about four, and it's Thursday night, and we're watching him, and he's, I don't know, he's eating something, he's eating like a cheese omelette, and he doesn't like cheese omelette at all, in fact he hates cheese omelette. And he's got a fork, it's quite funny, he's got a fork and he's pushing it down onto the cheese omelette, so a little tiny bit of cheese omelette sticks between the tines of the fork, and <laughs> pulling it off his teeth like this, and he's crying, because he fucking hates cheese omelette, you know, little tears coming down his little four-year-old's face, oh, it's sad, it's really sad, and dropping into the cheese omelette in the plate, so, uh, so in that universe we adopt that little lad, and then there's a couple of other adoption scenarios anyway, but the, cru the crucial thing you need to know here, Gary, is that in all these, uh, in these adoption scenarios, and to be honest with you, I haven't found one yet where we don't either have a baby or adopt one. In all of these scenarios, they all come out exactly the same. 
exactly the same. They all come out with me talking to you on a camera from the afterlife. And you with your long hair talking to the YouTube thing. They all come out. This moment appears in all of them. You know, they, they meander through different paths. But they all come out here. It's weird, you know. So, I don't know. So, in answer to your question, because I know I've warmed on a bit. In answer to your question, you know, would I um, change it? Would I say, no, I'm not going to have a kid. I'll do something different instead. Part of me, and I'm not trying to cop out, it'll sound like a cop out, but you know, this is how it is in the afterlife. We're lawyers. All lawyers live in the afterlife. We, um, from our perspective here, it all comes out the same, and the choice is really to have you or to adopt you. Now, I think, if I'm honest, a large part of me would want to adopt you. You know, if I was if I was going to give advice to anyone on Earth right now, not that it makes any difference because it's not there's no free will or anything. You can't change people's minds, really. But if I was going to give any advice, I would say don't have any children. For the same reason you don't buy a dog from a puppy farm. You know, go to the pound, find the dog you like. Same reason there's thousands of kids in adoption centres and children's homes all around the world. Go and adopt one. You know, it's going to adopt one. Don't get caught up in that whole river of genomic information bullshit. And it has to be your bloodline. It's all crap, that. It's just pseudo-spiritual shit. Don't get caught up in that. We're all related. We're all family here. We're all kin. Go and get a, another kid out of the adoption centre if you want one. That's a much healthier thing to do. Apart from anything else, you know, if you've adopted a kid, then the kid absolutely knows you want it, right? You know, you want, there's no accident, you can't accidentally adopt someone, you know what I mean? So do that, I would say. And, and part of me does say to myself, I wish I'd done that. You know, part of me wishes I'd adopted you. I can never wish you dead because, you know, you're just a fantastic human being. But uh, part of me does wish I'd adopted you. Part of me does wish I'd raised that little baby that looks a bit like a cowboy and a bit like an Indian. But, you know, if I'd done that, you know, then... There wouldn't be a professor of communications working in that university in the states right now. You know, he wouldn't be he wouldn't be there right now. So if I'd done that, so you know, because he'd be you, you know, and that lad with the pushing the tines of his cheese, you know, getting the cheese omelet on the tines of his fork and crying into his dinner. You know, he wouldn't be a drama teacher right now. You know, he'd be he'd be you. So I don't know. Apart of me wishes I'd adopted you and raised you, but I would have deprived the world of those other folks who give a shit, but you know, I would. Uh, so, no, I don't know, I don't know. Take what you like from that, son. Uh, obviously, I just want to repeat that I am proud of you, and that um, uh, if you ever decide to top yourself and join us over here, and as I say, I know, I know the answer to that already, then we'll have a good time together, I'm sure, you know. Uh, I don't know what we'll do. Fish. Play golf. Let's play golf in the afterlife. It's fucking fantastic. Multi-dimensional golf. You should try it sometimes. Brilliant. Yeah, you hit the ball and it goes in. It goes everywhere simultaneously. You slice it, you hook it, it goes all in one. Fantastic. Complicated rules. Anyhow, that's it from the afterlife. That's what the sky looks like in the afterlife today. This, this is the... Uh, this is what we do to pray in the afterlife. We have this thing called praying. It's not really praying. But we do this where we all look up like that. And we look for a hole in the trees, like that, and look to infinity in the direction that's 90 degrees away from every single other direction, and we say, thank fuck there's no God. <laughs>